Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nyong'o Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra, and continuing our theme of festivals for this season, we're zooming into generic regions in Japan and the festivals that only they would have. So you have to travel around the countries to see them all. As we constantly mention, Japan has thousands of festivals. It might be a bit impossible to go to them all in a year. So if you want to make the best of our time in Japan, you ought to know the biggest ones to attend. So we're highlighting some region festivals for you today. But because of our limited time in each episode, we've classified Japan into four sections. We have the north region of Hokkaido and Tohoku, the east region of Kanto and Shubu, the west region of Kansai, Shikoku and Shugoku, and the south region of Kyushu and Okinawa. In each region, we're going to look at two to three unique matsuri that you can only find there. So wherever you're planning to travel in Japan, you're definitely going to find a special festival to attend. Want to know what they are? Let's jump into it! Oh, and don't forget to have your notebooks ready. I'll be dropping some useful related vocabulary words for you. Let's start out with the north region of Hokkaido and Tohoku. As they're at the tip of the country, they're usually pretty cold. So with that being said, the first festival in this region that's specially held here is the Sapporo Snow Festival or Sapporo Yuki Matsuri. Yuki translates to snow. This is one of Japan's biggest winter attractions, if not the biggest. Usually held at the beginning of February for about a week in Hokkaido's capital city Sapporo, this festival started in 1950. With three different sites, look for massive ice and snow sculptures, snow slides and snow rafting, concerts and activities. I'd say thousands travel up north for this. The next one we have is the Kanto Matsuri in Akita. Kanto means pole lantern. So when you translate the name of the festival, it means pole lantern festival. This Matsuri is a Tanabata-related celebration in the city of Akita. If you don't know what Tanabata is, we covered it a bit in our previous episode. Tanabata is known as the Star Festival and held on the seventh day of the seventh month. During Kanto Matsuri, over 230 Kanto poles, made of bamboo with lanterns on them that are lit by real candles, are carried by performers through the main streets, accompanied with flutes and drum music. Poles are usually 12 meters long and weighs 50 kilograms. The third northern region Matsuri is the Nebuta Matsuri, taking place in August in Awomori. This is also another Tanabata-related festival, involving large lanterns parading the city. Nebuta refers to the float of brave warrior figure, which gets carried around the city, replicating the armies in the 800s to scare away enemies. These floats are often made of cotton, cloth and bamboo. The highlight of this Matsuri is not only the floats, but also the musicians, dancers and large taiko drums accompanying them as well as yatai food stalls around. And that's your trio northern festivals. Here's a quick vocab recap. Yuki, snow. Kanto, pole lantern. Tanabata, star festivals, literally translate to evening of the seventh. Taiko, large drum. Yatai, food stalls. Moving on to the east or middle region of Kanto and Chubu. This region is best known for the country's capital city, Tokyo. Here we'll only talk about two, and the first one is in Kawasaki, the Kanamara Matsuri. Now this is a strange one, and I dare you to Google it. Taking place every year in April, this festival has a gigantic pink sculpture of the men's genitals parading around. Now hear me out. I know Japan can be a bit hen or weird, but this Haru Matsuri is to pray for fertility, smooth marital relationships, and business prosperity. Recently, it's becoming a major event in the LGBTQ social calendar. So Kanamara Matsuri is held at the Kanayama Shrine, which is dedicated to a divine kami, god, that's celebrated as the protector of blacksmiths and of sexuality. There are a few legends as to how this Matsuri came about, but that's a story for another day. You should go on a Nihongo Master blog to know more. Oh, this festival has lots of similarly shaped candies and food sold at Yatai too. The other regional festival in this region is the Kanda Matsuri held in Tokyo. This is one of three most famous festivals in the city. The full-blown festival happens on every odd-numbered years, while the simplified version happens on the even-numbered years, known as the Shadow Festival. The latter doesn't really attract tourists as much. Taking place in May, the Mikoshi, portable shrines, are accompanied out of Kanda Myojin Shrine in the morning by thousands of people, including musicians, priests on horses, or uma in Japanese, going through the districts of Nihonbashi, Akihabara, and Kanda. This is an age-old event dating back to the Edo period. I think two festivals are enough for this region, don't you think? The first one's a handful, I'd say. Here's a quick vocab recap. Hen. Weird. 
Haru, spring. Uma, horse. Mikoshi, portable shrine. By the way, if you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? At Nihongo Master, we offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you've aced. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? We're moving on to the west region of Kansai, Shikoku and Shugoku. And of course, the biggest matsuri in the region, or even the whole of Japan, is the Gion Matsuri in Kyoto, dating back to 868 as a religious ceremony to appease the gods during the outbreak of an epidemic. This festival takes place over the entire month of July, but the biggest highlight is the grand procession of floats, called Yamaboko Junko. This is a parade of huge wooden festival floats consisting of two types, Yama and Hoko. 23 yama and 10 hoko yatai, or floats, are used in the parade. Hoko floats can go up to as tall as 25 meters, but both types of floats are decorated elaborately. Three nights before the procession of floats is the yoyama, a three-evening event where Kyoto just let loose with food stalls, yukata, and performances. Now, we move down to South Osaka, where we have the Kishiwada Danjiri Matsuri in September. This is one of the most famous Danjiri Matsuri in Japan, to refer to cart pulling festivals, and dates back to 1703, essentially a harvest festival to pray for a good autumn bounty. This matsuri is a fun celebration with carved and ornamented floats pulled down the streets. You can call the large wooden carts as Tenjiri Guruma. Each one represents a different district, all competing for victory. So the western region of Japan likes to compete and party hard, as you can see. Now for a quick vocab recap Yamaboko. A word combination of the two types of floats, yama and hoko. Yatai, floats. It's the same pronunciation as the food stalls. Junko, cruise. Danjiri guruma, large wooden carts. Last but not least, we have the southern region of Kyushu and Okinawa. Known for their warmer weather, the region also knows how to party hard. In Fukuoka, you have the Hakata Dontaku Matsuri held in early May. This is where people dance and parade through the streets with a wooden shamoji, a utensil used for stirring and serving rice. Yeah, a bit weird, but it's been going on for more than 840 years, and more than 2 million people come here to see it. There are parades, and people in traditional costumes walk and dance the streets. 1.2 kilometers of Meiji Dori is closed off and transformed into Dontaku Dori. If you go further south to Nagasaki, you'd find Nagasaki Kunchi, the festival of Suwa Shrine, in October. During the Sakoku period, this city is the only one connected to other countries, so Nagasaki has influences from all over the world. This festival showcases that, as well as Mikoshi and Dashi parades. Oh, and the highlight of this matsuri is the Jaodori, the dragon dance. This is where people move a dragon body with the beat of the music. And last, we have the Okinawa Zento Eisa Matsuri, held in Okinawa in September. This is where the traditional side of the island is shown with traditional instruments during performances, like the kachashi dance. This is Okinawa's traditional dance. People wave their hands above their heads and dance on the rhythm of Okinawan folk songs. I guess the south is chiller with a lot more dancing, don't you think? Now, for our final vocab recap. Shamoji, wooden rice scooping spoons. Dori, street. The Sakoku period, a time in the Edo period, where the Japanese government controlled and restricted international trade and the emigration of Japanese people. Dashi, a portable Shinto shrine pulled by people during a festival. Don't confuse with Mikoshi, where it's carried on shoulders. Ja Odori, dragon dance. Kachashi, Okinawa's traditional dance where people wave their hands above their heads and dance on the rhythm of Okinawan folk songs. And there you have it. Seven unique festivals from various regions. Don't they say a lot about the region? Which ones are you most likely to attend when you come to Japan? Tell us your thoughts by commenting on social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 
Also, head over to Nyongo Master Blog if you're interested in reading about topics like these some more. And if you're keen on picking up some more Japanese for yourself, pop onto your official website, nihongomaster.com, to learn more. While you're at it, why not get yourself a subscription? Get a head start on your Nihongo journey with Nihongo Master. And thank you so much for listening in. Join me next time, we'll be walking you down the avenue of Japan's rich culture. Mata ne!